Hey, what's up guys? It's Steve from Get Game Smart, back with another TFT VOD review. Today we're playing a Mage Dragon Soul composition that's been really popular on the Ranked Ladder recently. Uh, and I, I'm sure you've seen it, so I, I, I won't go over it in too much detail, but it's really strong uh, with getting a Mage Spatula either on the your Shivana or on your, your Swain. Uh, without further ado, let's hop into the VOD, and please remember to like and subscribe if you haven't. What's up guys, we are now in the uh, VOD review, we managed to secure ourselves a Thief's Glove start, or rather a Crit Glove start, which I believe is the most flexible um, of the of the carousel item, so I, I usually do target the, the glove when possible, or when it's uncontested. More importantly though, we're able to get this Fortune Tom Kench, so Tom Kench chosen really strong guys, whether Brawler or Fortune, it's uh, a very strong early front line, so don't pass it by in your early shops. Uh, and rather than actually buying any of the units here, we're we're seeing if we uh, what we get. We're, we're trying to stay flexible here and really hoping for another fortune unit to go along with it. The Nico and the Shivana aren't bad. We're gonna sell the Nico. The Shivana will use. Um, there's actually a Darius in our shop right at two one, so that's excellent. We're gonna go ahead and slam the Jeweled Gauntlet uh, and throw the Wukong in as well. This is a pretty strong early board. Um, and the thing is, like with the Shivana out of the orb, the Tom Kench is getting the, the Brawler bonus, so that's really strong. Uh, Darius is a super, super good holder for mage items at the moment. That's like your Jeweled Gauntlet, uh, your uh, Hextech Gunblade, uh, Mage Cap, you name it. Darius is a very good holder for, for mage items for sure. Um, so definitely slamming the, the Jeweled Gauntlet. On the Darius, we're gonna get a lot of value. Making a quick switch out for the Zed here, just trying to get as strong of a board early. Uh, Zed's really strong early, guys. Don't don't be passing by early Zeds at the start of round two because it's he gets the ninja bonus and uh, the rounds go a bit longer. So pretty often he's able to significantly reduce one of the carries uh, attack damage, which is gonna uh, win you a lot of rounds. Anyways, we're actually it, super fortunate here where. Uh, very, very rarely, usually when you're in a position where you get the Fortune Tom Kench, you're going to want to try and lose streak early. Um, but we actually knew that we had pretty sizable power advantage here with getting the Orb Shivana as well as a Darius with the Jeweled Gauntlet. So we we, were, we felt pretty comp competent win streaking the early rounds, um, which is going to just put us at not only a good health advantage, but uh, definitely let us econ early too. So we should be able to sell down here. We've got plenty of units on our bench to, to make econ. Um, or actually pre-leveling here would be would be another good alternative. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're still playing some pretty weak boards. So um, I don't know about you guys, but it's really hit or miss. I, I feel like a lot of people are playing very strong boards, playing a lot more aggressively the last few days. Um, as we're closing in on the end of the season and people are, are making their final push. But yeah, we're definitely able to secure our eco there, uh, moving into the first carousel. So unfortunately with our, our carousel here, we're, uh, we're, we've got the curse of first, so we've got the, uh, the last pick, but still there's, um, Honestly, we're, we're not too item dependent right now. We're, uh, we're, we're pretty much expecting that we're going to go into a bit of a, a power trough here as people start to, to round out their early game comps. We're not going to get a whole lot stronger because we're still forced to keep the, not forced to keep the fortune in, but we want to keep that fortune uh, intact. And yeah, we're uh, looking at this tier, I believe, because um, with the Jeweled Gauntlet Slam, you are uh, with the Jeweled Gauntlet Slam, we are learning to, leaning towards mages as our post-fortune transition. Uh, when you have fortune in, guys, you always want to be thinking about how you're going to break your fortune streak. I mean, we're win streaking right now, but uh, that's going to change very shortly, and we're going to start losing a lot of rounds. It, um, able to get the Maokai in, again, just taking advantage of the, the Brawler bonus we have in to, to get some more health points and, and people out on the board. Um, but as I was saying, you always want to be thinking about what your out is going to be from Fortune. Uh, and with the Jeweled Gauntlet Slam, with a Chalice on my bench, I am thinking about Mages. Uh, so Mages is a pretty pro popular transition, uh, largely because you've got Annie, you've often got Annie two-star sort of thing, um, which obviously slots really well into your Mage comp. 
Uh, other alternatives for breaking your, your lost streak could be going into a Kale comp. I don't like that as much. I prefer p playing that from ahead. Uh, sometimes going into Slayers is pretty common. Um, a bit less common would be Brawlers, but like I've, I've played a few games where I'd go Fortune and then I've got a Brawler frontline with Slayer damage dealers, and that's that's not too, too uncommon. Um, not saying it's the greatest, but uh, the main thing is you want to be thinking about how you're going to be able to put out a strong board uh, midway through round three or at the end of round three sort of thing. Um, so that you're not midway through round four and still really scrambling with without any direction because that's when you're going to find that you're uh, going eighth in a hurry. <laughs> Fortune can be great. Um, it's definitely definitely a, a good snowball uh, trait to use, but uh, of course it's, it's a double-edged sword. Krug's here, not super exciting. Unfortunately, we, we uh, only get the one component from it, so we get just the, the Meg Negatron cloak, which we already had one. Um, really not feeling very good about our items at this point, but fortunately we have a really strong economy because we were able to win streak the early game with fortune uh, and, and play pretty pretty forward-mindedly. Um, we're thinking about the future a lot, so that's, that's putting us in a good position here where uh, we should be able to sell down to our 50 econ at 3-1, which is, yeah, like I said, a, a very strong econ and uh, definitely the advantage that we're reaping of, of playing fortune. So again, everyone's gotten a pretty strong board out here. This Katarina with uh, Gunblade is about to do a ton of work. There it is, yep. I, not much you can do about that, I, I suppose. Um, but such is life. I mean, it's it's 3-2 now. We should be able to go up to 6 here. And wow, we're, we're level 6 with 49 gold to our name still. Um, putting this Katarina in doesn't make a ton of sense because uh, we're not going for 6 fortune, she's not making use of the assassin. Uh, that's, that's probably a blunder in all honesty. I, I think I'm getting more value out of uh, another 1 star Maokai out there even. Um, the only reason I have the Katarina is in the off chance that I get a 2 star Katarina before I get a 2 star uh, Darius. But yeah, um, I'm, I'm not a big fan of playing 6 fortune, especially at like the diamond plus elo because people are just going to take advantage of it too hard. Uh, but here in our next shop at 3-3, we do get a, a natural upgrade for our Maokai, which is pretty nice. Um, and yeah, as well as a Kennen and a Sivir. These, we're, we're not really too sure what we're doing here, honestly. This is a pretty pretty bad mid-game rolls, um, really not helping us that much. The best play would probably be grabbing this J4 and swapping it out for the Katarina and getting the Keeper passive in uh, would be a way to get this board a bit stronger. But I think at this point, I'm also kind of considering the fact that I don't want to win. Uh, so I cut it out from the videos, but I did scout around a bit and I was looking at basically how strong the other boards are. The The best time to cash out your fortune loss streak is six, six losses with your fortune in. Um, and that's gonna provide basically, basically it's the uh, highest return for investment. So um, definitely going deeper will, will net you more profits, but it's more risky as well. At the carousel here, I grabbed this Darius in part to go up to Darius 2, um, but I also know that I'll not feel bad at all about then slamming a chalice on him. Um, and I could slam a second chalice already, but I, I'm electing to, to hold on to those items to stay a bit more flexible. And I've pretty much pigeonholed myself into playing either Kale or Mages at this point by slamming both the chalice and the jeweled gauntlet. Jeweled gauntlet's a pretty good DPS item on Kale. Um, you can throw it along with a, a QSS and uh, Ginsu's Rage Blade, and you're going to have a fine time. Sure, it's no RFC, but you don't always get perfect Kale items when you want to play Kale. Um, and obviously, Mages would be a pretty natural transition with these items as well. So I was really excited there. Um, it looked like I was going to win this one, which would be a, a cash out at five, which would be fine. But instead, we take a pretty good loss, which I'm even happier with. Um, so we're securing that loss streak is, is going to be a big payout. Uh, we are able to slot this Vi in just to get the, the four Brawler bonus, and that's pretty much the, the ticket we need to cash out. Um, so like I said, always got to be thinking about what's going to be your cash out, and we've got four Brawler, two Keeper here, like just a ton of effective health points on, on this board. Uh, we're just a big stat check, and a lot of teams 
that aren't really solidly filled out and have a ton of utility uh, just won't be able to, to deal with the stat check of this brawler ball um, combined with the keeper shield. So we actually destroy that guy and we've got to be feeling pretty good about having cashed out our fortune win streak or loss streak rather. Econ up to 40 and we are in a solid place. So we're actually able to grab a, um, a I think we got a crit cloak, a uh, giant's belt, a rod as well as a spatula so we, we we just got a ton of new resources there to work with um we sell off our, our chosen tom kench so that we can start rolling down for a new keeper starting that transition uh away from this fortune because i've had a few games where i cash out my fortune lost streak and then i don't replace it and all of a sudden i am in a very bad spot very quickly so we've got a ton of gold here a ton of components uh we have to start making some moves right now um and honestly, we've got a bit of a paralysis by analysis situation going here. But after a quick analysis, I do decide that the play is going to be mages. We've slammed that mage cap. So uh, in, in, in terms of like general mage cap holders, the consensus is basically it's going to be Swain over Shivana over anyone else. It could be like a Nunu or a Darius, but like Shivana and Swain are, are by far the, the two best users for that. Uh, and the reason for that is because their casts, well, Mage Cap obviously lets you cast twice, and both of their casts are huge, uh, huge stat buffs. So they actually get that twice. So uh, Shivana, it's like a plus 250 damage on basic attacks. She gets that applied to it twice, um, which is really, really wacky, actually. And yeah, we're, we're feeling a bit better about ourselves, but we know that we actually don't have a stable board yet. Um, we do get the five mages in there that is going to help, uh, but we're, we're, we've still got a bit of a work to do, but at the same time, we're really comfortable with the direction that we're headed because we've got the mage cap, we've got, uh, just missing the, the GA from having perfect ASOL items, which is, which is really good. Um, and yeah, we've, we've actually picked up, uh, a mage chosen Vigar, which is also super helpful, um, as well as a couple Vigars on the bench. Who knows? Maybe we can get a three star uh, to carry us through the the end game. And yeah, this this Shivan is really strong now. Super tanky with the the Dragon's Claw as well. Uh, unfortunately, isn't able to carry us through all of that by herself, but is looking very strong regardless. Making a few changes here just to get a, a bit more out of my board, um, slightly improve my board strength, and yeah, we rolled here. We're not really sure what we're looking for. Um, in all honesty, there, there's not a, we don't have a lot of outs that we can hit, um, and yeah, like we, we find some some pairs for our uh, bench, but yeah, and we do slot the Vigar in after that. We we decide that's worth more than the Elder, and that's probably true. Um, but like I said, the, the rolling there at 4-3 probably doesn't make the most sense. Uh, playing mage, you, if you don't have an ASOL, that's sort of your priority is finding an ASOL. So uh, rolling at 8 is going to be more effective. Uh, give us a better chance of, of finding that. And again, all of these boards that we are playing against are looking really scary right now. Uh, we keep having the Shivana survive towards the end, but it's just not enough to, to uh, make a cleanup crew. Again, we're grabbing a, a tier off of Carousel. Um, the idea being we could slam a Hodge or who knows if we get a, a, another uh, spatula, we could have another mage spat on our hands would be good. And yeah, we go up to a fast eight here. Again, I'm not sure if this is the right call. Um, the idea being that I want to be able to survive obviously, cause we are uh, we're getting pretty low in the old health department. Uh, but also want a better chance of finding that a soul. I pick up the kale here again. I, I said I was thinking maybe going kale with these items too. That's really not a possibility at this point. I'm not picking up the kale because I think I'm going to transition. Uh, I picked up the kale because I wanted to draw the four cost carries out of the um, champion pool to in slightly increase my chance of grabbing an a soul. So going up to level eight there, I don't, I don't know if it actually improved my board that much throwing in the second Shivana. It really shouldn't have. I think the actual reason I won that was because Master Chen was transitioning um, during that round. Uh, or, I, or I was just having very unlucky matchups before where I was playing people that had just positioned for me or something. 
because uh, my board should not have improved that much by going to eight and plugging in another another uh, tier two Shivana, even though Shivana's a good unit. Uh, we do pick up the Morgana pair here. So the idea as soon as I got this uh, Mage Spatula was actually to get it onto a Swain as soon as possible. Um, so Dragon Soul Mage is really good with, uh, like, you've got your Aesol, um, your Swain, and then uh, Brand usually as your third Dragon Soul. Um, and then you've got Morgana and Swain as your Siphoners. So uh, it's really, really strong. It means your uh, Aesol, even without... Um, Gunblade is going to be doing a ton, a ton of healing. Uh, yeah, so I, I'm really excited and, and looking quite feverishly for a Swain in these rolls as well. That would uh, definitely be a big, big power spike for me. Speaking of power spikes, we do find the Aurelian Soul here, and we're finally able to uh, get get all of these mage items that we've had since the first round. Um, and put them to good use. I mean, Darius has been using them very well, like I said, but uh, even a Darius 2 is, is not going to be as good as a, as an Aesol 1 at holding these items. Able to get the Morgana 2 as well, which is super helpful. Um, and we're able to start transferring these items to the, the rightful place. We're still missing uh, the Guardian Angel on our Aurelian Soul, which is usually the number one priority in this build to guarantee it gets the cast off. But you know what? Sometimes you don't get perfect items. Um, and we're just living with what we've got <laughs> and, and making the most of it. We naturally see another uh, Aurelian Soul in our next shop, which is super good. This is one of the advantages of, of going for, for level eight is you're just gonna have better chances of finding uh, the carry champions that you need. I'm griefing myself with my positioning quite a bit here, actually. Um, yeah, that's better, throwing that in. Uh, the Morgana should be back beside the Vigar to uh, benefit from the Chalice here. Um, as well, my Shivana probably shouldn't be in the very middle front line by herself. I'd probably be better off putting her off to the side in case she gets one shot. Uh, you don't want to put your Shivana with a Mage Cap in the second row because... <laughs> Uh, it will often jump into the enemy backline and she'll go like try and 1v9 at the very start when she ults and get blown up. So keeping her in the front line is definitely definitely the play. Also lets her get her casts off sooner and start actually benefiting from that mage cap. Uh, but yeah, the Hodge is doing a ton of work there. And yeah, Shivana's, Shivana's carrying is pretty hard. Um, so I did just use the Reforger there, I believe on a chain vest to try and hopefully, I, I had a couple outs, so I was really hoping for the GA for my Revelian Soul, but we end up with a Relonomicon and a Shroud, which is pretty good too. Speak of the devil, guys, we just had a huge hit there. Um, the three-star Shivana, what a big hit. Uh, nobody expects it, nobody saw it coming, but we had been quietly racking up a ton of Shivanas, and well, at, at this point I'm thinking, I, I guess I'm probably no longer looking for that Swain, or at least I, I'm not transferring the cap over until the Swain's at least level 2. Um, because this is absolutely disgusting, guys. A 3-star Shivana, so gains, when they ult, they gain an additional 512 uh, bonus magic damage per hit. And that gets applied twice, so so forget about the bonus health that you get, a ton of bonus health and the ranged attack. Uh, but you also do an additional 1,000 magic damage on every auto attack, which is absolutely bonkers. Um, so this Shivana is super strong. Uh, get down in the comments below whether you think that this uh, Shivana is worthy of the Chad title, but definitely definitely pulling its weight in this match, um, bringing us from the brink of death uh, into a, a, a pretty favorable match for us. So we do find our Swain here, and typically... This would be a huge hit for us where we would be selling our two-star Shivana, transferring the items over to uh, the Swain, but that's just not the case here. We do have our Shroud on the bench. We're thinking about dropping it onto the Aesol to get the perfect Shroud here, uh, but we're also greeting a little bit. So uh, the reason I didn't end up dropping the Shroud onto the Aesol, even though it would have helped, um, is that I'm thinking I'm going to survive another two rounds and have a chance of getting another perfect item for my Aesol, like that, like a GA basically. Um, and that's the only reason I avoided it there. Uh, I got absolutely slammed. Fortunately, we, in our next shop, find a natural Vigar 3, which is huge. Uh, two three-star, three-cost carry-ish champions um, are now going to be popping off. And we are suddenly in a, in a pretty good position here. 
Um, like I said, the reason I didn't use that shroud is because I didn't want it to uh, clog up the third item slot on my A soul, which I'm hoping to two star. Uh, so instead, I drop it onto the Annie. Um, yeah, and we're we're looking pretty good. We got a huge shroud off there. It's definitely able to help us close out this game um, and send Sakuma to the Shadow Realms, I believe. Oh, actually, I think he'll survive this. Yeah, really, really doing a ton of work. 10,000 damage from the Shivana there. Uh, and we get some pretty interesting items here. We get uh, Hextech, Gunblade, the RFC, and the Ludens. These are going to go on our uh, Morgana, except for the RFC. Sorry, these are going to go on our Swain, except for the uh, RFC, which goes on our Morgana. We do finally hit that two-star. Um, I should have actually probably thrown the Ludens onto uh, the Aurelian Soul, but that's okay. We're, we're freestyling here a little bit. Yeah, Azir is pretty good at uh, just taking up space. Um, <laughs> that, that sounds rude, but no, he is the best at taking up space. So if, if you have really no frontline, throwing in an Azir is a way to give yourself a bit of breathing room on the board, basically. Um, so I didn't position the Sand Soldiers super well this time around, but I, I do get some value out of them later. Uh, it's just, yeah, pretty instant frontline. Um, if you're not running vanguards or adept, it's it's really quite helpful to squeeze uh, an azir and just to get give yourself a, a ghetto front line. Doing a bit of scouting around, we've secured ourselves a spot in the top three here, but all of these boards are looking pretty scary, except especially this Peta Petri guy. It's looking good. It's looking good. The Shivana is just doing so much work, guys. So much, so much work. Uh, 5,000 health, doing 1,000 additional magic damage on every auto. Uh, the healing from the Hodge is just too much. We were doing some scouting to try and get a, a good Shroud off. Unfortunately, we were positioning our Shroud for the other person. Um, and, and that is actually all the difference in, in this match. This level 2 set with the uh, Rabadons and Animating vis Visage and Jeweled Gauntlet is an absolute monster. Absolutely pops off and destroys my team. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's all she wrote. Uh, and unfortunately, despite throwing together a pretty good board, we come away with a third. But uh, hey, that's how the game goes sometimes. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you haven't, please feel free to like and subscribe, and we've got more content coming shortly. Thank you guys. Have a good one. Bye.